In this course, we will cover RF power amplifier linearization. In this course, we will discuss what is linearization operation, why and where it is needed, and what are popular existing techniques to perform linearization, with pros and cons. This slide shows a typical RF transmitter front end, in which data are modulated or mixed with a carrier. The created modulated RF signal has to be then amplified with a power amplifier, or PA, in order to drive the antenna so the signal can be transmitted through the air. The objective is that the PA needs to play its amplification role as perfectly as possible without major distortion and adding noise. In other words, we want RF out perfectly proportional to RF in with respect to the signal shape and integrity. Unfortunately, all real PAs have a certain degree of inherent nonlinearity. Graphically, a nonlinearity is visible when the output behavior ceases to follow the linear line. On an amplifier, it can be measured by the gap between the ideal line and the real actual curve. The 1 dB compression point is the moment when the ideal and real behavior differ by 1 dB. The PSAT level is the maximum the output can exhibit regardless of the quantity of input injected. Both of these are giving a certain measure of the nonlinearity of a power amplifier. Mathematically, any device, and thus amplifier, can be described as an output y of t as a function f of input x of t. y of t equals f of x of t. And any function can be developed as the sum of infinite power series elements of the form a sub n x to the n. When the device, or amplifier, is perfectly linear, all the a sub n terms other than the n equals 1 are 0, so y of t is proportional to x of t. Nonlinearity will be a measure of the presence and intensity of all the a sub n terms where n is different than 1. But in RF, nonlinearity will not cause only distortion, but will generate new, higher, and unwanted frequencies, especially when a band of frequencies are injected into the amplifier. We illustrate this phenomenon quickly with two input frequencies, omega-1 and omega-2. The nonlinear x squared and x cubed terms will generate frequencies that are other than the original ones. These can appear in the useful signal band, resulting in data distortion, and or extend and pollute other adjacent bands. We can see that unwanted signals that are far away from the baseband signals are easy to eliminate with simple filters. However, unwanted signals that are very close to the baseband signals can be very difficult to eliminate, requiring complex and expensive filters. More particularly, the odd term combinations are more troublesome. The two most troubling terms, which are due to third order distortion, are the ones at 2 times omega 1 minus omega 2 and 2 times omega 2 minus omega 1, because they fall into the useful signal bandwidth. These two terms are referred to as third order intermodulation distortion products, sometimes referred to as. IMD3 or IM3. The higher order parasitic frequencies, 5th, 7th, will fall into the adjacent channel bandwidth and are out of band emissions, thus perturbing the other users. This is why the output spectrum of a PA must respect a certain guard band. Otherwise, the product or equipment cannot be put on the market. A modulated signal is made by mixing a band of frequencies, the base band, with the carrier, a local oscillator, and the results are a central spectrum around the carrier plus other bands above and below the wanted channel. In order to limit and allow suitable communication, their outband levels must be below standard agreed values, highlighted in yellow. The more nonlinear a PA is, the higher adjacent power it will generate. The consequences of a nonlinear power amplifier are in-band parasitic frequencies, third-order intermodulation products, 
out-of-band parasitic frequencies, 5th, 7th, ninth order IM products, reduced power efficiency, the ratio between the power spent and effective power emitted, reduced range, and increased cost. Therefore, linearization is a must for technical performance and cost reasons. In fact, all amplifiers have nonlinearity problems. But in RF and with power amplifiers, the high power level and the frequencies involved cause issues affecting directly the system's operation, like in-band perturbations increasing error rate, out-band perturbations violating co-channel users, limited power efficiency, antenna range, etc. Different ways to achieve linearization exist. They all have different linearization performance, power efficiency, frequency modulation dependency, bill of material complexity, size, and cost. A linearization operation is in fact a corrective action, similar to what a lens does to correct eye vision. The principle is to add an opposite reaction to the nonlinearity in order to compensate and to obtain a straight line. The correction can be made before or after the amplifier. The terms used are pre-distortion or post-distortion. One can also make the correction at the baseband level, sometimes called digital pre-distortion, or at the RF level, called RF-PAL, which stands for RF Power Amp Linearizer. Linearization adds elements or functions in the signal path that compensate the nonlinearities of the element to linearize it. Many techniques exist to achieve linearization. Power backoff, that's limiting the use of the PA to its linear region at a, usually a lower power level. Predistortion, analog or digital. Adaptive predistortion, which can be analog or digital. Feed forward. Envelope elimination and restoration, or EER. Linear amplification with nonlinear components sometimes called link, or Cartesian feedback, CFB. Maxim has opted for the analog adaptive predistortion technique, thanks to its performance, design simplicity, size, and cost. We will explain more on this technique in subsequent slides. In fact, the input power backoff technique corresponds to no action taken, i.e. no corrective signal injection before or after the PA. This means we have to operate the PA well below the saturation level. In other words, the peak to average power, or PAR, should be fully below PSAT. The direct consequence is one often needs to limit the power, uh, hence the input power, injected to the PA, often several dB below what a well linearized PA permits. The above figures show the input power limitation, the PAR zone has to be below the nonlinearity start in the first figure, to be compared to the second one, where a proper linearization technique has been applied. This technique is based by detecting and amplifying the nonlinearity, then subtracting that nonlinearity at the output of the PA. Theoretically, it should eliminate the nonlinearity. The principle is simple but very complex to build, demanding the use of additional amplifiers which are to be matched and perfectly linear. For the pre-distortion technique, the principle is very simple. Since the PA is distorting, just distort the input signal in the opposite way. This method requires knowing the PA characteristics. A possible enhancement is to make the correction According to the PA output, we then have an adaptive predistorter. Also, the predistortion can be made at the RF level, like RF PAL, at the IF level, or even at the signal data level, which would then be a digital predistorter. Maxim opts for the adaptive RF predistorter technique. As mentioned earlier, the predistortion can be made at the digital baseband level. This is called DPD for digital pre-distortion. The drawback is you will need a wider bandwidth at the baseband processing 
in order to apply the predistortion. An enhancement to the previous distorter circuit is made here. The output is also used to adapt the level of predistortion to be applied. This slide shows the effects of linearization on a spectrum analyzer. The side frequencies, the effect of the nonlinearities, are minimized. To summarize, in this video we have discussed what is linearization and why it is needed, as well as some of the popular techniques to achieve this function. For more information on this topic, please go to our website at www.maximintegrated.com under Products, Communications, Wireless, and RF. We hope you enjoy this video and see you again in another educational video of Maxim Integrated.